Thank you very much, Omar. Hi, everyone. So super happy to join the development track for change. Uh, give me one second to start sharing the screen. So we have some exciting things to show you. So let me tell you a little bit about what Philip uh, and Milan are going to talk about today. So um, as we are basically very, very busy in the eTurnT ecosystem, there are new things coming in. Um, you know, constantly, and Philip and Milan are going to talk about the technical aspects of this, but let me first introduce Superhero. Um, but let me start with the problem. So we started from a very specific problem. We noticed that the platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, Patreon, Spotify, Twitch, um, basically they offer users a way to monetize the content that they create. But they use existing social platforms, the third parties own and rule the content, at the user expense. It's either on the privacy, free speech, financial, or otherwise. They take a cut or ban you to speaking about specific things. And we notice that there's no universal tool that spans across many, many platforms. That's why we introduce you for the first time, uh, Superhero. It's uh, basically a new peer-to-peer -peer social platform that empowers people to support other people without anyone in the middle. So from artists that bring joy and uh, different senses, painters, musicians, um, you know, performance artists and things like this to open source developers that build, you know, tools that we all use like the, this one that we're using uh, today, educators that actually raise and, uh, you know, educate us and our children, um, nonprofits that advocate, you know, for important causes, some communities, animal or organizations, environmentalists and things like this. So. Um, Basically, this is how we decided to solve the solution. So Superhero is a peer-to-peer -peer, um, tipping solution that is built entirely on eternity. It includes a browser extension and a mobile app that enables anyone in the world to send a tip of AE tokens to any URL on the internet, any whatsoever. It basically offers an owner of the URL ability to claim the tip sent to their web page. And second part is actually a website that organizes news feeds by content that users tip and by most uh, users' interactions and allows users to post and comment, um, you know, as they send tips and vote on the best content out there. The very brief introduction on how it looks, it's basically a very clean interface that shows you some super important things. Uh, and basically, the the browser extension and the mobile um, look a little bit like this. Um, more technical details are going to come later as soon as we finish. And I just need to share a couple of more things uh, to, to all of you. Um, we basically all of us that are uh, working on this, we decided to have a mission to kind of liberate the users from the solutions that have been in use for the last 20 years uh, that are basically using our data that they collect and sell, that our actions are being tracked and used for marketing and other purposes that are third parties that are directly profiting from, you know, people sending and receiving support, third parties taking a really unfair cut for creators work in some of the cases up to 30% or 40%. They are censoring or original content, uh, content because it doesn't, you know, fit with their worldview, worldview and basically many, many other things. So we basically looked at the matrix of what, what are the important things for us and globally, what are the important things? And we kind of put it in the matrix, comparing it with every mainstream platform that we found. And we wanted to make sure that we are basically green in all of these metrics from doesn't collect the data all the way down to, you know, uh, instant payouts. And, you know, for us, we wanted to find a way to send tips directly to our favorite creators, favorite causes, favorite projects without any intermediaries. So if we want to support, I don't know, um, WikiLeaks, we don't need to use credit cards or Visa. If you want to support a comic artist somewhere in Kazakhstan, we don't need to go through you know, intermediaries. If we want to support someone who has a beautiful, amazing uh, uh, video blog on YouTube so they don't get banned because somebody you know, decided to. So we decided to liberate it a little bit and get or give support to whichever URL on the web we decided to. And that's just the beginning. 
of the whole thing. So we want to welcome you to a better virtual world with really quantifiably more freedom to transact here. And with that, I'm going to stop and ask you to welcome our colleague Pivo, Philip, to kick off his part of the presentation. And Pivo is going to show you how the whole thing has been built. But we can start with the presentation, right? Hello, welcome to this week's Superhero League. Today I'm going to show you around the superhero.com community um, and also go a little bit um, under the hood as I'm one of the developers of this and show you around how everything is working. So let me first start off um, what is superhero.com. So it's a community website where you can tip any content of the internet um, and can react to, to this and see what's, what's happening, what's up, and you have some nice feed with all great content that other people liked in the community. So let me demonstrate how this works. For, uh, for a testing purpose, I'm going to tip my own GitHub profile. So I'm going to add a message, test tip. I'm going to enter the URL and give some amount. I'm going to give 13 tokens. And also what you see here, it connected my wallet using the superhero wallet um, automatically. So any actions that I will do on a website will be authorized and sent to the Eternity Network using my wallet. So let me send a tip. Right now it will ask for my confirmation. I will confirm this. And as soon as the tip has been um, taken into Eternity Blockchain, everything will reload. And on the latest page, I will see the latest tip is the one that I just did to my own profile. And also um, when I go to the extension, I will see that my balance has changed. The balance change here is a little bit slower. Let me reload and then it will also have been changed. So that's fine now. So let's say you have con um, tipped a content creator of the network. Now, what will the content creator do? They will go to their profiles and they want to claim uh, that this is their profile. For this, I'm going to put here in my GitHub profile, I put my .chain name, which is also connected um, in my superhero wallet here or they can put their eternity address and then they go ahead and use the superhero wallet to claim this page. What this will do, it will go uh, call the smart contract and ask some independent oracles to check is this um, public key present on the website that was tried to be claimed and these oracles will answer and then if the they answer correctly, yes, this is actually the public key. They will confirm the payout and will pay out to this address. So let's see now, when we go back to the main page here, I have my full amount again. And also, um, if I go to my profile here, I will see I have zero unclaimed amount. I have claimed five URLs um, just as the profile view. So let me go ahead and show you what are the components that you do this. So the main website that you see is the Superhero UI um, repository public under the Eternity name, um, where all of this is developed with Vue.js, connects using the AAX2 standard to the Superhero wallet. And you can also go ahead, um, check this out locally, how this is working. This um, wallet, uh, the website, a lot of times communicates to a backend for caching reasons, um, but all of the content in the end is stored in a smart contract, except for profile pictures. They will be stored in IPFS and the comments, they are stored in the backend right now, and the backup of those is done also to IPFS. So somebody independently can run the backend and the full website themselves if they wish to, or if they are developing on it or want to make changes regarding this. So let's jump into a diagram of what is going 
under the hood. So you did see me click the claim button on my profile using the superhero wallet. And uh, first of all, we did tip. So I was calling a smart contract to create a tip and this was stored in the smart contract. Then me as the owner of this profile of GitHub or any web page therefore did go to the superhero wallet and use the claim button. What this will do currently is go to the backend and process the claim. We do this using a backend so we can pay for your transaction. Anybody can claim for any, any website using superhero, but only the one who can put their public key on the actual site can receive the payout. So this is not a security concern here. It's just that people that don't have AE yet can receive AE using this process. And then the backend uh, calls the tipping smart contract as well uh, in two stages. First, they do is what we call pre-claim is um, going to the tipping contract. The tipping contract says, yeah, this is the, the actual tip and I will have to query the oracles as um, the alternative blockchain cannot access um, the content of the website directly. We have to use the oracle system of the alternative blockchain in order to know what is the real world value of content on this website. And this is done using an Oracle contract, which does a lot of queries to multiple Oracles. The Oracles can be independently run. So right now they are not run by superhero, they are run by independent developers in the Eternity community. And they report back to the Oracle contract. And then what the Oracles uh, the oracles report back to the oracle contract. We don't know when this is finished because this will take a few seconds. The oracles will have to receive the request to look on the website. They will have to download the content of the web page and check is the address there and then send a transaction back to the oracle contract in order to know. So what we do in the back end is we're going to uh, wait for all of this to happen and then we're going to uh, run a claim transaction meaning we're going to call the tipping smart contract again, calling the Oracle contract and check, have our Oracles answered and is it successful? Um, a successful um, call is when the Oracles have responded with a correct address. So we said, I want to claim for this address. And is this actually the address on the web page? There has to be some minimum amount of oracles answering so that there cannot be an attack where only one oracle is answering and does the whole decision. And of this minimum amount of oracles, a greater of 50% have to give the same response. So they have to agree where to do the payout. If this was successful, the tipping contract will pay out the tip to the owner of the site, meaning the public key that was on the site. Um, so the first component that we had is the superhero wallet. You will also find it open source on GitHub and can check it out how, how all of this is working and how we develop this. For example, the communication to the website. Then there's the tipping smart contract, which is also open source here. Um, you can go into the contracts and the tipping smart contract and have a look at it for yourself in detail. And also you will see that it's very well tested using the AEX, uh, the AE project tool in order to, for automated tests for the contracts. Then next up is the Oracle service. This repository is also open source and the combination of the uh, implementation of the Oracle that is running at the independent Oracle operators and also the contract that I mentioned earlier that's doing the claims. So uh, next up, I want to go a little bit deeper into the code and show you a few interesting things that we have done there um, using Sophia smart contracts and uh, JavaScript SDK in order to provide all of um, the components working nicely together to um, allow for a decentralized experience where not a single point of failure or single point has to claim or has to say what is the URL on this web page to authorize payout. Let me jump into my editor 
um, let's first go into the tipping smart contract. This is just one part of the tipping smart contract that I wanted to show in detail. So when, when I was call, uh, creating a tip, I was calling the tip function of the smart contract, giving the URL as a string and the title that will then be indexed by the superhero web page. Um, we are looking up, is there already some claims or tips for this URL? Because you always um, claim not one tip, but for the whole URL, of course, to make it simpler. Um, if so, we're going to figure this out. If not, we're going to give an empty response. Then we give the tip an ID, which is just the next tip in, in sequence in the smart contract. We're going to create the structure of our tip where the sender is the call.caller, the one that was creating the tip in the first place, stored title, add the generation for this claim for, or for later claiming it, um, put in the timestamp so we know the order of the tips in time as well easily, put in the reference to the URL, and um, put the amount uh, that was the call dot value which has been sent together with the tip and persist all of this in the state and also what we do last but not least is fire an event that we can later index in order to show to the user. Then uh, the next part that I wanted to show is the claiming. So I said when we're claiming we're going to call the Oracle service in order to check if everything is fine. So we will also here pass the URL, the account that we want to check for, and we can force a recheck, so ask the oracles again. Then we call this function require allowed by Oracle service. So this will call the Oracle service smart contract in the bottom here and ask it for have these, has this claim been persisted and was it successful? If not, we will forbid the payout. If yes, we will continue with the logic and see for the payout. So then we're going to go to check if the URL is existent in order to fetch it later, um, check for the claims. So what's the amount for this URL to be claimed? Check if it's greater zero because we don't want to allow zero amount payouts. Um, then we're going to pay the actual amount to this account and this account has been checked if it's the actual account on the web page using the Oracle service. We throw an event and we're going to persist for this that this URL has been claimed and set the to be claimed amount to zero because all of the amount is going to be claimed at once. Next up, I want to show you a little piece of the Oracle service smart contract. So I said, before we're going to claim, we're going to check all of the oracles. So there's the function query the oracles for an URL and passing the expected account. First of all, we will compute what is the amount of fee that we have to pay um, for each oracle in order to uh, make this process as we have to pay the oracles, of course, to provide the answer. And we're going to check if this is the amount that was sent together with the query um, in order to not have any other mistakes or spend too much money to the smart contract that is not needed or too much tokens. And if not, we throw an error. Then we're going to make a query string as we work with strings here in order to parse it nicely in JavaScript where we concatenate the expected account with the URL. And then um, you will see here we define an anonymous function where we go for an oracle and we're going to query that oracle with a um, corresponding fee and give a TTL of 20 because we expect a very quick response from our oracles. And then we execute um, the check um, qu for query function for each of our or oracles using list.map and um, persist these queries. Our oracles will then receive in their logic the query and I will go next um, over how we're going to process this. 
and this is for checking the claim so when the oracles have answered later um, this is the function called by the tipping smart contract where the URL is passed the account and it will return this success if it was a successful claim on the basis the tipping smart contract will do the payout later so we're going to check for Oracle answers for this URL and uh, corresponding account um, we look is it the minimum amount of oracles we look is the um, um, response the correct one so we uh, we look for positive answers and um, then check with this lot two lines of logic if the percentage of positive answers are greater 50 percent and if it was successful we're going to persist the state else we do nothing and then we're going to return if it was successful the account and the percentage if it was not successful um, we will return that it uh, failed and they uh, have to query again um, the oracle service then works as javascript and i want to go a little bit over how we check the web page actually so what's first going to happen is we're going to check for specific profiles for example on twitter each url is corresponding so if you do a tweet it's twitter.com slash your profile slash the id of your tweet and we can extract the profile very nicely which we do with the first part here it's a regex where we um, match this group of the twitter url and next up we have a dom selector of which item of the website we want to look for so for twitter if you tip a tweet or you want to claim a tweet your profile biography has to contain um, the eternity address or the chain name which is checked by this DOM selector. If this doesn't work, we will fall back to look at the website at the site of the actual tip, not the profile. And then for each of these websites, um, so for star of the website, it's first checked, is there an eternity account existent on this website if not is there a .chain name existent on this website and we will index those and these rules are just regex rules and we can just expand them or anybody can make a pull request to make a more specialized rules for a different website in order to get better results when claiming and then this is part of the oracle service which is running in javascript on the servers that that run these oracles that operate them and they receive queries when they receive a query um, we want to respond so here this is how we do we do the response so first we're going to figure out all of the things for example the expected address of the query and the url of this query then we're going to fetch using these two rules that i explained earlier fetch the content of this web page and check is this address there and look at the pass result if we get a pass result we will respond on the eternity blockchain to this oracle and if not it will not happen and then when you run it uh, the output can look like this for the um, oracle operator so we got a query with this account for this tweet then we will go ahead and notice this is a twitter url as i explained earlier where we have twitter.com slash the profile name and then the ID of the tweet. And it figured out if I look at the profile, I maybe have a better chance of finding a dot chain name. And actually there was a dot chain name or a account that corresponded to this address. And so the Oracle will respond with that address. So that was a very rough overview of how the um, tech behind the superhero.com website is working how all of the components work together and where you can find more information on the github look and uh, in detail how it's working and if you have any questions i think we have some time to answer them now after the presentation or you can go ahead and ask them on the eternity forum of course and i would be happy if you go and try out the superhero 
.com website together with the extension uh, see for yourself if it's working and if there's any issues let us know please thank you so let me read you the questions we have quite a lot of them okay. so let's start from the beginning mm, so what challenge challenges did you encounter du encounter during developing the smart contracts and why do you think SAP is the right language to develop this so I think uh, one of the biggest challenges was keeping the gas costs as minimum as we can while supporting a massive audience for superhero.com. So anybody should pay the same fee to participate in, in this. Um, so we had to make some architecture decisions in the contract that were not really straightforward in order to achieve this. But in the end, um, it was very simple if we use the maps from or the very efficient maps in Sofia and in general, we were able to keep the contract very small while achieving this powerful functionality. Let me continue with the questions. The next question is, is there any currently any possibility to see the payout transaction for a specific URL? Um, it is possible if you look for the transactions towards the tipping smart contract. Uh, for example, using the Eternal Explorer. And then you can see all of the transactions that we do with in order or for the users. And if you did them by yourself, you can see them in the activity history as Milan answered in the chat, even uh, if you're the recipient, the correct one, of course. Otherwise, you only see them in no, the Explorer. The next question is, how did you decide on the success percentage for Oracle responses? For now, we did choose 50% uh, or greater 50%, as this is a usual number found in decentralized systems when working with blockchain uh, to find trust. Um, but also, this will be able to be changed later on. We want to make a governance process on top of this or a voting process where we can change um, these numbers later on when we deploy a new new contract for this if we find something that's matching better for our use case. Uh, in case we update the contract during this phase, do the tokens or the, do the tips get lost or do we migrate them? Currently, it's we have a plan for one upgrade of the contract next week and uh, where we will migrate the tips and this will allow you to reclaim your tips um, eventually. Mm 